So hi and welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome back to the lecture of wireless security. So in today's lecture, we will continue from where we left off last lecture. But before we get started, let's just give you an overview of what we have accomplished so far, what we have talked about. We introduced you to wireless security. Uh, we just told, we just talked to you and explained to you the main topics and the main content that we are going to cover in this course. We then moved on to the wireless technologies, explaining you the importance of wireless nowadays and why it's so critical. We we explained this from three perspectives, from technology perspective, devices and applications. And we, we, we told you that there is a huge development going on in all these directions. Every day there is a new application. Every day there is a new device. Every day there is, uh, every, let's see, few years there is a break, uh, groundbreaking technology. Like nowadays, we are sitting uh, like most of the countries nowadays are heading towards 5G. They want to deploy 5G and 5G is a wireless technology. There are many advanced Wi-Fi based networks as well. And near field communication, RFID, ZigBee, all these stuff uh, with the Internet of Things emergence. We have LoRa and uh, some other networks as well. So we convinced you that wireless is important. Nobody can deny the importance of wireless in our daily lives. And then we said if, that, if wireless is penetrating our life this much, then it, we are transforming everything like our, informi our personal information, banking information, uh, sensitive information on the cloud, information we we give to the websites, we browse on the internet, then this means that it's so important and so critical that we secure ourselves while we are communicating wirelessly. And then we said, what's the big deal about wireless? Why wireless? Is it that different from wired? We explained the key differences between them. And according to, the, to this, uh, according to the main differences between the two networks, we, we came to the conclusion that there are attacks that are common, applicable to both wired and wireless. And the goal to, to make wireless as secure as wired. And more specifically, we said that uh, the differences will be at the physical and Mac layer because the functionality of the physical and Mac layer in the wireless network is different from the wired network. And then we moved on and we explained to you the OSI layers. We said we are going to explain the attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities for each layer since the attacks are the same if from the application to the network layer for both wireless and wired networks. Then we should discuss the attacks at, at all of these layers and then go and discuss the attacks at Mac and Phi. And therefore, we said that we should give you a brief overview about the OSI layers for those of you who forgot about it and who didn't review or didn't take the network course, which is very important and critical. We explained to you the functionality very quickly. Then we, we explained the protocols used at each layer and we explained uh, the differences between them, the meanings and at which layer they are being used and deployed. And then, then we moved on and explained the physical layer, why the physical layer is so unique and so uh, the amount of information available on physical layer compared to other layers is not that much. And we explained to you that this is the layer that we will be focusing on in the future to utilize it to ensure the security and the privacy of our systems. And, and we cannot just depend on the upper layer encryption and decryption and security approaches. Then after that, we, we said if we, if we want to really secure our wireless links of our wireless networks, then what should we do? What are the requirements? What, how can you say that my wireless networks is secure based on what? We explain this briefly and we said we need to maintain four or five requirements. We need to meet these requirements. First, we need to make sure that uh, authenticity is met and uh, and achieved in any wireless security protocol you use or security algorithm. 
that's meant to authenticate the users. And then we said confidentiality, integrity, availability. And we explained the differences between them. I'm not going to go into details, but this is just to a quick overview of what we have discussed and talked about. Then we said, let's, the, the, those are the security requirements. Then now let's go back and see the security threats and vulnerabilities and attack that exist at, uh, at the OSI layers from the application to the physical layer. And we started from the physical and we mentioned the key three attacks on physical eavesdropping, jamming and authentication. And then we went to Mac layer, the network layer, the transport layer, application layer. And last lecture, we, we started from here, where we said, OK, we have explained the attacks, the vulnerabilities, and told we, uh, we found out that there are many threats, many uh, attacks that, are, that can be done on the wireless networks. Then what can we do about this? How can we defend our communication network, wireless network, against these attacks? So we, we, we then said, like, let's go back to the security requirements and see how we can achieve these things. So we started with authenticity, and we mentioned that authenticity can be achieved using multi-authentication multi, multi -authentication protocols, starting from the protocols that utilize MAC addresses, the TLS, SSL, wireless protected access, web, and others. The confidentiality is the same. We mentioned that there are many security algorithms, many cryptographic, uh, cryptography approaches that can be used to maintain confidentiality, then integrity as well, availability, and the privacy. And we started giving examples like uh, for for confidentiality. What we do? What do we use? Uh, we have the cryptography types. We have the, we told you that the current internet, the current web, the current wireless networks are being mainly protected by using three types of uh, cryptography approaches. The first one is secret key, symmetric cryptography, we call it, where you have a key that you share it between two nodes and the nodes use this key for authentication, for uh, confidentiality as well, and, and uh, in integrity as well. And we also explained the public key cryptography, which is called asymmetric cryptography. And the reason why we call it asymmetric because you don't have the same key at both sides. You have different keys. And we explained the, ha the hash function, the one-way cryptography. And we mentioned that the main reason of using the hash function is to ensure the authenticity of the transmitter. We can make sure that this is what the transmitter claims is, is really right, or the, whether the transmitter or receiver, you can do this on downlink and uplink. And example of these uh, example of techniques that can happen at the example of security algorithm that that's basically symmet that uses symmetric cryptography. We have the advanced the advanced encryption protocol and this. Uh, we and for asymmetric we have the RSA and the ECC elliptic curve cryptography and the RSA algorithm. And for hash function we have. Uh, SH, SHS1, we have SHS2, we have SHS3. SH, uh, SHS1 includes the MD4, MD5, which are now not trusted, not reliable. People, hackers can attack them. And for SHS2, uh, which includes uh, hashing function of length more than of about 265, 256 and 512, the length of the, uh, the, of the hashing function. And those, we, we said that those are used to replace the previous uh, untrusted hashing functions. So basically those are used for authentication purposes and like digital signature and for detecting if there is any modification to the file you transmitted for three main purposes, digital signature, message authentication, and message integrity. Nobody has played with the message. Nobody has forged the message. 
all or did something wrong with the message. We can detect this easily using hash function. And then to to to, to make to make to to make our explanation more comprehensive and coherent, we explained to you the asymmetric encryption. We gave you some examples. And we went to the how it works, uh, the RSA algorithm practically, how it works, and how the transmitter and receiver communicate with each other and share it and encrypt the messages and decrypt them. And we ex we said briefly, like, uh, when you have uh, asymmetric cryptography algorithm, like the RSA algorithm, and you, the transmitter has, like, the server that you communicate with has two keys. One is public and private. Anybody that wants to talk to the server, the server sends him the public key. And the private stays at the server. The private key should not should never be revealed to anybody. Because it's the, the, the so anyone wants to communicate with the server uses the public key of the server to connect with and send the message. And then only the server with the private key corresponding to that public key can decrypt the message. Now, if, if the server wants to send, he uses his private key to, to, to encrypt the message, or it can be vice versa. We can use RSA on both, downlink and uplink, where the, the receiver becomes now the master node, and it sends the, the public key to the server, and the server uh, encrypt with the public key, and only the receiver who has the private key can decode the message. And this is how the internet is being secured using mostly the, using this RSA. And even I went to some websites like Wikipedia and our university website and some other websites, and I showed you practically how this is being done and what what where where you can find this information, how you can know that your website is using. Uh, RSA or ECC and what's the length of the key and what's even the public key value if you want to use it and and some other details that we couldn't we cannot cover all of them because of time limitation but basically you know that this algorithm where it can exist in practice and now we talked about how to implement it how to develop this algorithm how to code it using Python or MATLAB or whatever, and how it how the algorithm works practically. So this is basically, we summarize the algorithm here. You, you, you have, you basically it depends on prime numbers, and those prime numbers are the ones that are responsible for the difficulty of decrypting or hacking this algorithm. And we bought two links for you, one link for from Medium that explains easily the pro this procedure and another link for uh, how to implement it as well. And then we move to the other uh, uh, encryption technique called uh, elliptic curve cryptography. And this is this can be this can be used instead of RSA. And we said that this one does not require a key of high of length uh, of length as as uh, as equal as the length of the RSA because it's more difficult to decrypt. Basically, we said that if you have uh, an ECC encryption algorithm with size two two hundred fifty six, then the, the the strength of this security algorithm is the same as if you were to use an algorithm like RSA with size with key size length of more than of around 3072 so which means that with with uh, with shorter key length ECC can perform better than RSA and we showed you some websites that use ECC and some other websites that use RSA both of them are acceptable but nowadays most are moving to ECC we also explained to you, we gave to you an example of symmetric encryption approach, which is the advanced encryption standard, where you have a key shared between the transmitter and receiver. And we told you the main difficulty in these schemes is how to share the keys securely. You need a trusted node, you need a method to share this, and this increases the signaling overhead and the throughput. Then we moved on and talked about how you can implement this practically. I mean, this is uh, this is how you can do this uh, by math and then go and code it. 
and then we moved on and talked about where it's where it, uh, this this algorithm we we told you that it's used not only for wireless for protecting the wireless transmission but also for protecting the data you store in your pc or in your memory and after that we we touched upon an, a new security approach which is called digital signature algorithm which is used for signing messages, um, for integrity purposes, and for authentication purposes. And we said that in this case, you have the public key and private key, but you use this as well for authentication purposes, and you include this in a signing algorithm that can, that can ensure the authenticity of the message and the integrity of the message, and the receiver will have a verification algorithm that can make sure that this message came, this message is actually came from the right receiver, from the authentic receiver. And then we, we talked about the role of cryptography in the blockchain and Bitcoin. And we talked about this and we said the main problem in Bitcoin and blockchain that just like just like it is the way with cryptography every once in a while after 10 years 20 years we found out that the previous technique that we used to use to secure our communication is hacked because of the advancement in computing now uh, considering the fact that we are heading to use uh, quantum computers then in this case those algorithms those encryption approaches that are used in bitcoin eventually at a certain point of time will be hacked uh, i'm not saying by personal computers like your computer and my computer i'm saying about computers that are being produced by big companies like uh, microsoft and google and d-wave those are excellent in quantum computers so they are building those computers and they can hack this they, they have very powerful computer that prove to be capable of hacking very difficult encryption approaches they are difficult on normal users using normal pcs like you and mine but like for those companies things are not different now what can we do about this so this is the state of the art of bitcoin and the crypto currency uh, technology. They want to uh, come up with algorithm, security algorithm that can make the network quantum resilient. Even if you have a quantum computer, you cannot hack it. So we talked about the digital signature process, the generation of keys and addresses in, in cryptocurrency in Bitcoin, for example. The public key is not the same as the Bitcoin address, and we reminded you again of the RSA that's used in the in the Bitcoin, and we told you it's not only RSA but also a digital signature algorithm. And we explained the differences between RSA and digital signature algorithm, and from different perspectives, if you remember. And then we said, what can we do? I mean, at the end of the day, we, we, we just showed you that this is, this is uh, the algorithms are evolving day after day. And we, if we use, the algorithm we use today will not be secure after five, 10 years from now. So what can we do to prepare for the future, to protect ourselves after five years, after 10 years? So we said people and researchers around the world, scientists are really pushing the pushing the boundaries and they're trying to come up with other approaches that can resist those existing uh, threats. An example of these approaches, lattice-based cryptography, hash-based cryptography, advanced encryption standards, symmetric cryptography, quantum cryptography, physical layer security. And we mentioned uh, like a mo one of the most promising approaches is physical layer security. And we told you that this is the future and this is not yet being deployed. It's just in the research phase. And that's why we will, de we will dedicate some many lectures on this topic so that you can understand it very well and you can become qualified uh, so that if in the future companies decide to use this then you are ready you can quickly apply for the job and you will be among the very few people who know who know this stuff and hopefully you can be hired with a very good 
nice salary that co can compensate for your efforts. Uh, before we move forward, another problem that I want to mention about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency because we have talked about it is the fact that Bitcoin, unfortunately, is aside from the security aspect of Bitcoin. And if it's secure now, this doesn't mean that it will be secure after 10 years. The other critical point that I want to highlight that, you know, Bitcoin is just like... Uh, it, 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 some people call it the digital gold, you know, the physical gold that you mine it from certain like mountains and those in the caves and this. So the Bitcoin, some people call it the digital coin. Why? Because they mine it in, in a similar way to how the uh, conventional gold being mined. So now, now let me just explain this. How do you mine Bitcoins? You mine them basically. You need to waste energy, and you need you need to have powerful computers that can really uh, uh, solve very complex mathematical problems and cryptography approaches in order to be able to generate some uh, some coins. Uh, what does this mean? This means that if you want to generate uh, one coin, you want to waste and spend hundreds thousands sometimes of dollars to generate that coin you got me because it's it's it, it, you need energy and you usually you cannot mine or generate a coin using your normal pc because it will not be efficient your pc will be burned out i mean it, now as time passes by and goes by even the complexity of these, uh, the complexity of the algorithms used to generate and mine these cones will be even difficult, much difficult. Uh, so, so what what happens then? It was uh, back in 2009. It was super easy to mine because it was not, I mean, just the starting point. Even one one bitcoin at that time was less in, less than one dollar. It was in cents. Now, one Bitcoin is equal to fifty thousand dollars. Insane, unbelievable. Uh, so, so you need, you need, you need. Eventually, in the long run, people will rely, will understand and realize that this is not efficient way of of money. I mean, unless they stabilize, they stop those mining. The mining process stops, and then people will just keep reusing and buying and selling the existing bitcoins. But but the process of generating it, it really it con consumed a lot of power, a lot of resources that's being wasted. I mean, for just to generate these coins. Mm -hmm. So maybe governments are nowadays, every government is working nowadays on its own currency because, as you know, the cash will vanish very soon. Like within five to ten years, you will not find any one, you, any government considering cash as, uh, as, uh, as a currency, as a national currency anymore. Everybody is heading to digital currencies and more specifically both crypto currencies, but they don't want to use Bitcoin. Each government will invent and use its uh, its own coin. So they, this is another interesting approach that can motivate you to study security because your what whatever you learn and whatever you master in security, it will be useful when government, when your government decides to build a blockchain or this or a cryptocurrency, national cryptocurrency, because you will be able to understand the security algorithm. And really, blockchain and crypto is all about encryption and decryption. It's basically the ones who invented it are the cryptographers, they call themselves. So it's basically sec security people. And that's very critical, very critical point. I want you to really pay attention to this course because it's the future, a future from different perspective. Yes, we are we are calling the course wireless security uh, because like this is related to my field and this. But as you can see, security is intersecting with so many other fields. And one of those, one of the most critical and most important field is finance. Uh, people are saying it nowadays, uh, fi uh, fintech. Fintech is a new term uh, that stands for financial 
technologies technologies directed to financial uh, to the finance sector so it's very critical that you understand the clever student will understand the link and he will be able to prepare for the future that's a very great thing to consider because it's going to shape and change the world now coming back to our topic uh, physical layer security we gave you brief just a glimpse of an eye about the topic we explained it to you briefly and we said we we mentioned exactly why we need it and we mentioned the existing problems with cryptography approaches and how what's the basic idea behind it and what's the goal and then after that we just told you like uh, if, if we were to bring a security algorithm that can meet all the previous requirements we talked about, authenticity, or confidentiality, uh, integrity, availability, and the privacy, and we told you there is one method, one critical method that can meet most of these requirements. Most of these requirements. Although it was presented at the time of publishing this security algorithm, which is patented now, it's patent and uh, published patent, international and national. This this slide I'm showing you, this is a patent, a uh, worldwide patent and also national patent. And this is the first, uh, like, let's say, this is one of the physical layer based approaches that can ensure confidentiality, integrity, resistance against jamming, and authenticity in one single approach which says that you don't even need to use any of any of the encryption algorithms that you use at the upper layers and this is not something that can that stick your now and can be hacked after 10 years or 20 years this is something that's theoretically and mathematically is proven to be secure so now, no matter what computational computer you invent in the future, whether Google or Microsoft or any of these high-tech companies, this method is quantum resilient, quantum robust. So, th so th this is just an example of algorithm. So this slide, I'm not going to explain it now technically. I'm just giving you an example of a security approach that can meet many of the security requirements without the need to use any of the encryption approaches. What does this mean that you don't need to use at the encryption, the existing encryption approaches? This means that you don't, you won't cause too much delay. You won't consume too much power resources. You are uh, avoiding the risk of being hacked in the future. You are not playing the game of Mike and cats. I mean, I, m m because security, security game is about mouse and cat i mean you just do something today after a few years they will hack it then you need to patch it you need to improve it you need to create something more complex and then after a few years the hackers will be able to invent some algorithms some methods and then they will hack it you need to upgrade it and this is the game we have this is the game the cryptography industry has been playing until now since 19, 1980, 1970, you create something. Why? Because the, all these methods were only computationally secure, which means that it's secure because it's difficult to solve this function. It's difficult to find two prime numbers. It's difficult. So all of it is based on difficulty, complexity, not proven mathematically or in, from information theoretic point of view that it's secure ultimately. So that's why there is a huge pressure, huge pressure on this domain. And cryptography people are still in their own domain. And this is, uh, this is something that I should talk about it, that the problem here when, when, when I when you are from wireless perspective and come and start working on this area, there are there are hundreds, thousands of people who are in, in understanding the security from their own perspective, from the IT perspective, from the cryptography perspective. And the problem, they cannot touch or reach this domain, physical air security. Why? Because they think this is not their domain, not their area. 
They are used to play with codes and write cryptography approaches at the application layer. And all of them just mix mixture of algorithm, mixture of function, mixture of difficult things that they can uh, just uh, fake, they can tune them and uh, like, trick them in a way that they make them work and then they make uh, the system secure against some attacks temporarily. Uh, but for this, when you come at the physical layer to be able to contribute here and to be able to implement security algorithm, you need first to understand wireless. You need to understand how the wireless signal at the physical layer interacts with the objects in the area, in the environment how it gets reflected, how, what, the, what do we mean by really fading? What do we mean by small scale, uh, large scale fading? How the signal, how the environment affects the signal? What do you do at the receiver when you receive it? And all these stuff that this knowledge is missing from the existing, the current cryptographers. The current cryptographers, they didn't even study these things, they just, they are coming from computer science background only. And trust me, now nowadays, you cannot say I'm just computer engineer, and you cannot say I'm just electrical engineer. This is the, 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 one of the worst traps any student can fall in. You need, you need to have, like, you need to be really multidisciplinary. You need to learn from computer, computer need needs a computer engineer needs to look at what's happening in the electrical industry in the electrical domain and in the communication domain so that you can why i'm saying this because innovation only happens when you look at what other people are doing in the other in their domains and they bring those ideas that nobody is aware in your domain about them and bring them and implement them in your domain and be the first then in then things will get really amazing i mean i mean you will because if if you just keep squeezing yourself and putting yourself just in a very narrow field where you can all your ideas are related to only your domain and your field you will never ever come up with something surprising most of the big biggest innovation in the in the whole world have been when you just take ideas being implemented in other domains, maybe in chemistry, maybe in physics, and translate those ideas to your domain. And this is not straightforward. This is because your domain has different has different policies, has different requirements, has different structure, has different rules. So you cannot just talk, take, if, if you can take them and apply them, then this is not innovation this is not gonna really shock your domain or be very useful to the industry but when things are you get inspired by some ideas that are being implemented in x domain and you take them to solve some problems that exist only in your domain then th this is gonna be outstanding and that's why you need to learn wireless as well if, if you if you want to be a real security, like uh, if preparing yourself for the future, not for now, not just for now, then you need to look at different domains and what's happening in different areas. So this is the example I want you to really focus on it and uh, I want you to be open-minded to many different domains and hopefully we can gather knowledge, uh, we, we can understand the IT security and the people, the cryptographers, the conventional cryptographers who are coming from computer science background, and we should present our work to them from the, their perspective, because otherwise they will not understand us and they will not even be able to read our work or understand it. And if you cannot make people understand you, 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 your your invention, no matter how strong it is, no matter how beautiful it is, no matter what problems it solves, if you cannot make people understand it in that industry, it will not be adopted. And this is very great lesson, I mean, and very, very important thing to consider when you are developing and coming up with a new algorithm and the new security approaches. So thank you, everybody for pairing up with me with this very long summary. 
but now we can we can just now go to the new stuff after we just like we can stop here for 